time now for some entertainment news with Shaytan Atigarin. Welcome, welcome. Hi to see you. Hi, hi, hi. How are you? <laughs> Good. <laughs> Let's kick off entertainment news uh, with some very sad news. Uh, Jamal Edwards, a British music entrepreneur best known for founding the media platform SBTV and help to launch the careers of artists including Ed Sheeran, Jesse J and Stormzy has died at the age of 31. Edwards was a pioneering figure in British rap and grime music, was raised in Acton, West London. He got into the music scene at the age of 15 when his parents gave him a video camera for Christmas. As his success grew, Edwards turned his hands to philanthropy as an ambassador for the Prince's Trust, a, a youth uh, charity run by the Prince of Wales that helps young people set up their own companies. In 2014, at the tender age of 24, he received an MBE as a member of the British Empire Award for his services to music. Following the news of his death, tributes have poured in from music industry heavyweights, sports stars and political figures. His mother, Brenda Edwards, who is a panelist on British TV talk show Lose Women, paid an emotional tribute to her son in a statement shared on the show's social media account, saying, It is with the deepest heartache that I confirm my beautiful son, Jamal Edwards, passed away yesterday morning after a sudden illness. Myself, his sister Tanisha, and the rest of his family and friends are completely devastated. He was the center of our world, the statement read. She continued, as we come to terms with his passing, we ask for privacy to grieve this unimaginable loss. I would like to thank everyone for their messages of love and support. Jamal was an inspiration to myself and so many. Our love for, for him lives on and his legacy lives on. Long live Jamal Edwards. Wow, 31, and he had already done so, so much. I just, you know, want to know what your thoughts are regarding this story. Um, starting with you, Tammy Topaya. Well, it's really very sad. I mean, losing anyone at such a very young age, you know, it's going to be very painful and very traumatic for his family members and his loved ones. But I think the focus should be on all what he achieved. There's no... I mean, we can't throw away the fact that he achieved so much more than what even some 90-year-olds have achieved. Mm. He has raised a number of talents. You know, Ed Sheeran is one. He, he also won, you know, member of the... He was also awarded member of the British Empire for his contribution to music. He was a philanthropist. So I think th those are the things that people should remember about him, knowing that even though he's physically gone, his legacy lives on. Yeah, yes, very interesting. I mean, interesting that you would say that because, you know, just um, getting ready for this particular story, a contact of mine actually told me that he was the one that introduced Ed Sheeran to Fireboy. Um, so you can see how much of an influence he had in, you know, with British music as well as um, Nigerian uh, music. Um, how are... uh, yeah, that was the point I was going to make. There is a big, strong link between the UK and Nigeria, and he was definitely one of them. And dying at such a young age, it's quite tragic, but just like Timmy Talkbest said, he has a huge body of work. Um, everyone re will remember him for his contributions to the music industry. We just hope that um, his parents and his loved ones are comforted and that the work that he started continues. Yeah, Aaron? Yes, oh, um, I must say that it's, it's really, really sad to actually hear this, understanding that he actually not started a movement, a grand movement, but he actually took it to the next level. And a lot of people have literally benefited from this over the years, even way past Stormzy and, and Ed Sheeran, of course. But I must say that it's a huge loss. It's a huge loss. And the mother will be heartbroken knowing that she set him on this particular path because she herself was... She tried to be a musician, he didn't really work out, she, went, she was in the X Factor and the rest of them, but I don't know, it's really it sad to hear things like this. Really but, it's always really sad news when a parent loses a, a child, yeah. uh, especially a phenomenal uh, child like this. Yeah. But um, you know, our condolences go out to his family, his friends and of course his fans. Uh, let's move on now to our next story. It looks like Netflix is continuing to stand behind Dave Chappelle. The streaming giant has just announced a more extensive partnership 
with the comedian. This comes more than four months since Netflix combated internal and external backlash for streaming Dave's The Closer. Now, Chappelle will host and produce four new comedy specials as part of his Chappelle's Home theme series with Netflix. And this time, he got to handpick a few familiar faces to entertain the masses. Now, uh, it must feel great to be uh, to be Dave Chappelle right now because you know a lot of people didn't know where this was going to go. Where was he going to continue with Netflix? Was that going to be the end of his career? You know, in the statement that he put out, he said, "Oh, thank God I've not been cancelled yet." You know, I really thought this was the end. And as you may remember, Dave and Netflix found themselves at the center of this media firestorm in the last quarter of 2021, where there were calls for uh, the Dave special at the time called "The Closer" to be removed from the platform due to trans phobic comment. At one point, the queer uh, Netflix employees staged a workout, but still the company's CEO, Ted Serrato, stood beside Dave and his company uh, in, uh, and, and his comedy in the two company memos. So, I mean, do you think this, uh, this is good news? Do you think that maybe Netflix should have, should have um, you know, taken him, taken him out completely? Because he's about to cash out from this, and I'm sure he's coming for the LGBTQ uh, community now that he's been giving the platform to do it four more times. Well, Dave Chappelle isn't stupid. That's one thing. So I don't think he's coming for the LGBTQ mm -hmm. community. If anything, he only is sharing stories of how he personally sees life and um, I think he'll be fine. There's no canceling Dave Chappelle. Yeah. I think we're all very happy that he has another opportunity to share his unique brand of truth with the rest of the world. And I have an issue with the media continuing to say that he made transphobic comments because they were not. He made comments that people did not like, but transphobic is a little bit... Uh, it's, it's a, a little extreme. much, yeah, you know, yeah. but I'm so happy for Dave Chappelle and hopefully his success can trickle down to us. <laughs> How is it going to get to you, Al? I don't know. No, but the good thing about Dave Chappelle is that he's a fighter. Mm -hmm. all, through all, throughout everything, he's been a fighter. Monique has gone after him in trying to stop him from probably getting... Who? Monique. Who? Oh, yeah. my God. No, you didn't okay. just throw shit. Yeah. Ah, okay. All right. Okay. A one-time comedian. <laughs> Wait after you. Of course, he was able to weather that particular storm, and we thought that our Netflix would actually go in a different direction. That did not happen. This man is a cat with nine lives, and mm -hmm. clearly people like him. I'm sure. Yes. Netflix has looked at the numbers. Yes. And they see that this guy actually is breaking through. Yes. And sometimes you need to, like you, you are saying that it's not, um, it's, it shouldn't be offensive to some people, but I'm sure they're looking at the numbers and saying that in this whole streaming wars, <laughs> we need to keep our place. Yes. Because Apple is after them. Disney's after yes, them. Yes. If they keep making decisions based on how an employee is feeling. Who well, an employee that ended up leaving and getting charged with a whole bunch of issues. Oh my god, let's oh, not get it. Let's not get it. Dave Chappelle is literally one of my favorite people yes. in the world. Never met him, but you know. He is he, he is a fantastic person. Well, um, let's move to our next story, and I'm curious to know what Timmy Tokway thinks about this. Britney Spears has always spoken about the fact that she wants to tell her life story, and now she has landed a book deal to do just that. Now, Spears recently inked a contract with publisher Sh uh, Simon & Schuster, valued at more than $15 million. A report stating that Spears' decision to share her story was made in response to her younger sister, Jamie Lynn's recent memoir, has been publicly denounced by the singer. The book deal comes at a time of new beginnings for the Grammy win winner. She's now engaged to, her, uh, engaged to wed her longtime partner, Sam Ashari, and her 13-year conservatorship ended last year. Ah, Brittany. Yeah. I think we should free at last. Yes. You know, I think <laughs> she's, she's, feel she's good. coming yeah, she's coming she back. Is. You know, she's coming back. I was watching a video she of hers. She is. She is. She don't, don't is. not musically. No, no wait now. Financially. She was away for financially. She was away for 13 years. Yeah. She can't just come back like that and say, well, I'm saying you can see that she's putting 
a few things in place. I was watching a video of her, like, you know, like uh, three weeks ago where she was doing like a dance routine. And I can say that, you know, you know, she's she's obviously spending a lot of time in the dance studio, in the gym. She's taking care of her diet. She looks better. So, of course, she's trying to move forward. And she's getting married again. Mm -hmm. and I you know, and I Is that big news? Oh, no, she's yes. been married a couple of times. Yeah, she's only been married to KFED. She's <laughs> only been married to KFED. It's a great way to end the show. Thank you so oh, much for always coming amazing. here. See you tomorrow. Yes, All thanks right. for brightening us up this afternoon, Shay. Uh,